Welcome to my lecture online. Our next topic in algebra that we want to cover and for which we want to get a better understanding is roots and radicals. And so, of course, the first question that comes to mind is, what is a root? Well, if you look in the dictionary, you'll find a number of examples and a number of definitions. I could think immediately of two that relates to mathematics, and then my wife thought of a third one. It turns out a root is also a part of a tree. But going back to mathematics, two definitions that we're interested in. One, a root is where a function equals zero for the first definition. Of course, that doesn't really affect the concept of roots and radicals, but yes, it does do it in this fashion. For example, when we have the equation that says x squared minus 4x equals zero, and we solve for x, x can be zero or x can be four. Those are the places where a parabola will cross the x-axis, and those are what we call the roots of the equation. But when we're talking about a square root or a cube root or a fourth root, or an nth root as we say, well, that's a different story. There we write something like this, where the symbol we use here is called a radical sign. And the whole thing here, where we have the symbol and the number underneath, that's called a radical or also a root. The different kinds of roots can be seen by putting a number up here. If we have a 2 there, we don't have to write the 2. But if it's a cube root, we have to write the 3. And if it's 4th root, we have to write a 4 and so forth. So what is a square root? Well, by definition, a root of a number is another number, such that multiplied by itself, it gives back the original number. So for example, the square root of 16 is another number 4, such that when we take 4 and multiply itself, we get back the number 16. Now you can say, well, what about negative 4? Because if you take negative 4 and multiply it by itself, you get 16 as well. But in algebra, by definition, we ignore that negative possibility. In other words, by definition, only the positive answer is used. Well, in some applications, like in physics, you'll find that, yes, we do need the negative answer as well, but in algebra, we just ignore the negative answer. Now, for a cube root, here we see that the cube root of 27 is equal to 3 because if we multiply 3 by itself 3 times, 3 times 3 times 3, we get back our 27. Or, if we have just the cube root, and I should put a little 3 on there because I did mean the cube root. If we have the cube root of negative 125, that's equal to negative 5 because negative 5 times negative 5 times negative 5 is indeed a negative 125. And it's acceptable that with cube roots, negative answers are allowed. A fourth root will then fall again in the same category as a square root. We can only use the positive answers by definition. And the fourth root of 16 is equal to 2 because when we multiply the 2 by itself 4 times, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, that gives us back the original number 16. So now that we know what a root is, we're going to use that information, that knowledge, to show you all the various rules and regulations we need to use when we actually process equation and numbers involving roots and radicals. And this is where it starts.